am here. I am here and I'm so happy to be with you today. Welcome everybody. We're just getting everybody in from the Facebook and YouTube channel, Facebook group and YouTube channel. I am seeing comments. Hello everyone. I really missed you last week. Thank you for all of your well wishes. Oh, I'm so excited to see you guys as well. There's our Facebook gals starting to join now. Oh, this is great. This is great. I, um, I was away last week, so I know that we put up a post um, indicating that I was sick. I had that darn flu that's been kind of going around, and I have to say I'm still not 100%. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your well wishes. Um, yeah, I, it took me down for a good three or four days, and I'm still really tired. You can see it in my eyes. I just, I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> but thankfully, you know, the, the tummy issues and the, the exhaustion, it's feeling much better. So I am back at it, and I'm excited to be here to share with you today. Hello, everyone. We've got people from all over the place. Uh, oh, there's a friend from just up the road in Airdrie, Alberta. Uh, we've got Denver, Illinois, New Jersey, Australia. We've got, uh, yeah, a couple from Australia. Hello, ladies. Uh, New Mexico. We've got Oregon, Florida, New York. Uh, oh, that's great. That's awesome. North, Northeast Ohio. So, Welcome everybody and I'm excited to be back with you as well. I guess I should introduce myself. <laughs> if we haven't met before, my name is Noreen Smith. I am the Product Development Creative Manager at Creative Memories and most Wednesdays I am with you live for an hour or so, uh, 5 p.m. Central Time. So some of you are watching on Facebook in our Creative Memories Virtual Crop Facebook group. Some of you are watching on the Creative Memories YouTube channel. Some of you will watch this later. So welcome everybody and I'm so, so happy to be here with you. Someone's eating dinner in Georgia. Well, enjoy. I'm glad to be your dinner companion this evening. <laughs> okay, well, I just want to say again uh, how, how humbling and how amazing it feels to have, you know, all of your virtual friends send you well wishes. When we posted last week that, that I was down sick and that there wouldn't be a fast and fun, so many of you hopped on and said, hope you're feeling better, you know, get well soon, sending healing vibes your way, all that kind of good stuff. And again, it just makes me feel so lucky to be part of this community. And you know, what a community we are. We're 35, 36,000 strong in this uh, Creative Memories Virtual Crop Facebook group with another 22,000 tuning in on the YouTube channel. Plus think of all of the folks out there that we haven't even met yet. So I encourage you to invite any of your own scrappy friends to join our Facebook group or to subscribe to the YouTube channel or both uh, because we have such a good time. We are the happiest place on social media. I tell you, you know, I, I tune out a lot of the other social media that's out there and I come here because this is the happy place. This is where people who love to scrapbook and paper craft and make cards come for camaraderie, for inspiration, for help and assistance and to share their love uh, of this great hobby of ours with each other. So I feel truly lucky to be part of it, and uh, I'm so glad that all of you are here. Makes me a little emotional, a little teary about how wonderful our community is. So again, thank you for all of your wishes. Uh, thank you, too, for sending in your suggestions. Now, when we posted that I was going to be ill and away last week, we also included a link to a bit of a survey. Not, not a survey where you actually, you know, say... I strongly agree or I strongly disagree, but really just a place for you to um, post your suggestions and questions. Because what I would like to do is take some of those, and I've been going through them, lots of great questions, lots of great suggestions, and I'd like to kind of categorize them and then start to address some of those um, questions. And I will use them to kind of as jumping off points to pre-film a couple of recorded episodes of Fast and Fun 
just in case I'm sick. So, you know, I've been trying to do that. I've been trying to get ahead of it, but I, I sometimes don't know what I want to um, share with you until, you know, a couple of days before the fast and fun. So I think if now that I have some suggestions from you, I can pre-film a few and we'll have them on standby just in case we have a technical glitch like we had a few weeks ago or in case I'm sick or if I'm going to be away. Okay, so that's definitely super helpful to me. I also will be using those as things that I can point out during our regularly scheduled content. So for example, today, one of the things that I saw, uh, a recurring question that I saw that you guys had uh, asked is ideas for using older punches. Now, you know that a lot of the time I'm focusing on the new products that we have coming out. I'm sharing those with you, giving you ideas how to use them. But I can also tell you how you could use them with some of our older punches. So for example, today I'm going to be focusing on the spring leaves frame punch. But these techniques, these layout formulas that I'm going to be sharing with you can be used with any of our frame punches. So we've got a few different ones that are, you know, still uh, available online in our, through our website. But you may also have frame punches that are long since retired. Uh, and these techniques and formulas that I'm going to share with you today, you can use with any collection and with any frame punch. So even though I'm going to be sharing spring leaves, and I know that some of you are going to say, Noreen, I didn't want to buy that one, but now you've made me buy it. <laughs> it it's a good one too. So if you don't have a frame punch and you love the spring leaves, definitely pick it up. But keep in mind as we go through today that these are really techniques and formulas that can be applied and used with any of our fantastic frame punches. Okay? Thank you, everybody. Oh, <laughs> Kelly's saying it's been a long week. I haven't seen you guys for a couple weeks. Yes, I feel the same. And again, thank you for all of those, those comments that you're still posting. It's wonderful. Okay, um, so like I said, let's get into these um, frame punch layouts. I actually have three layouts that I'm going to share with you today, all using the spring leaves punch, all frame punch, all using the new birds and blossoms, and all using only two pieces of paper. So again, you're going to be able to see how you can take any collection, any two pieces of paper, and adapt some of these. Okay, so let's switch over here. And first of all, I want to share with you a little bit about the birds and blossoms. This is what I was going to be talking about last week, and of course, did not have a chance. So if you have not seen this amazing spring collection, this is birds and blossoms. And I don't know about you guys, but I am so ready for spring. This winter seems to just have kicked me to the curb. I am so excited that in a couple of weeks it will officially be spring, uh, even though we might still have some snow on the ground. <laughs> but Birds and Blossoms definitely is giving me spring, giving me all of the sunshine and warmth, the birds in the trees. It's giving me all of those spring vibes. So let's just look at this really quickly. It's a collection with a paper pack, stickers, variety mat pack, and these gorgeous laser cut borders that are double sided. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you a little bit. Uh, I think one of my layouts uses these, but you can see, for example, on the little eggs here. Let me get a piece of white paper. Uh, on the eggs, for example, on this side, they're beige. And then on the opposite side, they're blue. So you've got lots and lots of different options. I will say, and I always suggest this anyways, but uh, I would buy two of these when you're do placing your order because you'll want two of each of these, you know, if you're working on a double page layout. All right, so that's the borders. Matte cards, of course. Oops, this one's upside down. Fantastic uh, sayings. Sweet little birds. Lots of great uh, colors and patterns. Very spring-like in feeling. Stickers, of course. Icons, word art, and borders. And then the papers themselves, they coordinate with our tangerine, canary, kelly green, baby blue, and blue. And you can see that we've got great hero patterns, 
tulips, butterflies, a fantastic distress stripe. I love that. Uh, some spring florals. And then this page, although it looks like a tonal, has these great little bird cages and nests on it. And then, of course, our beautiful bird friends. And then on the back, all these gorgeous tonal patterns. So love all of these colors together. That speckle, the leaves, a little sort of plaid gingham, another speckle, and then these little raindrops or water drops. So it's a beautiful collection. And uh, like I said, it's making me think all about spring. Now there also is the Robin Egg Blue 12 by 12 album cover with our fun little birdhouse and bird. And then you can buy them as a uh, Fast to Fab album with the uh, beautiful Fast to Fab pages, or you can buy it as a separate cover set. But look at all of these gorgeous colors, really nice, soft pastels. They're going to be beautiful for so many outdoor and spring photos, Easter, lots of great options for colors here. Just love those all. Hey, that kind of matches my sweater today. Love it. So that is the collection. Let's get into talking a little bit about the uh, pages that I want to share with you. And as I mentioned, they feature the Spring Leaves Frame Punch. Now that's one of two um, punches that came out with this collection. The other is the Fresh Flower Punch. And all of this that you see here, the paper pack, the embellish, uh, the borders, sorry, the stickers, the mats, and the two punches are part of the Birds and Blossoms Buy It All bundle. So that goes until Friday. So if you haven't purchased that yet, you can take advantage of the 10% discount on the Buy It All bundle and get everything that you need for your springtime scrapbooking. So the other thing that ends on Friday is uh, free shipping. So why not grab your your, bird, your birds and blossoms bundle as well as your uh, as well as take advantage of free shipping and get whatever else you need. So it's awesome. So noon on Friday. Okay, so let's talk about the frame punch. Now. Every time we've got a, a new frame punch, I get people asking, what do you mean it makes a frame and a border? It looks just like a border punch. So anytime you see a frame punch, you're going to want to notice that there are some silver lines right on the base here. There you go, you can see that now. Same on the other side. There we go. And then there are black lines on the front. Let me just grab another uh, border punch here. So this is the forest mushrooms. So you can see that there's black lines on the front, but there are no lines on the base. So that's how you know that this is a, just a border punch, although we've got lots of creative gals who figure out lots of fun things to do with these border punches. But the frame punches are specifically designed to do both. And I would love to know if you've got any little tricks or reminders that you use for remembering how to do each one. My best sort of mnemonic device is that frames use the lines on the base. So frames, base, they both sound kind of, kind of the same with that A sound. And then borders, front, borders, front. So it kind of has that same kind of O sound. So that's how I remember. But if you have a mnemonic device or other way that you remember the difference between how to punch a frame and how to punch a border, we would love to hear that. All right, so let me just go through really quickly how to punch the border and the frame, and then we'll get into the three layouts. So again, if you've never used one of these, just open it up at the back. Let's punch a border first, so border, front. We're looking for the lines on the front. So we're going to place our paper on the base plate and we're going to slide it until the edge matches one of those two lines at the front. So you can do it from either direction. Okay. So line, uh, sorry, edge of paper meets the line. I like to hold it with my right hand and I like to make sure that the paper is pressed up to that lip at the back. 
and then I punch with my left hand. Then I move it along and I look for when the punched shape meets the uh, matches with the shape that is printed on the base plate. So basically when I can't see any more of the blue pattern, that's when I know I'm in the right spot. And then I can just go ahead, move it along, and I'm gonna punch a beautiful border. Okay, so you'll also notice that this is basically an edge style punch because the design does not separate from the paper. You can of course cut it, use your 12 inch trimmer, cut it to any size you like, uh, and then you can punch it again to have a double border. We'll talk about that in a minute. Otherwise, even this, uh, you know, trim down a little bit, maybe add a sticker or one of our gorgeous little extra uh, laser cut borders. Be right, good if I had it right side up. There we go. And it's going to be a stunning border. Okay. So let's go ahead and punch a frame now. Remember frame base, frame base. So we're going to start by placing our paper to line up with that silver line. The other thing you want to remember about a frame punch is that the frame is designed to work with uh, increments of two inches. And that's based on the size of the, the punch at the back here, okay? So you want to have even numbers. So this is a 12 by 12. You could do it with a 10 by 10, 8 by 8, 6 by 6, 4 by 4. You can also do it with uh, a 10 by 12, uh, an 8 by 12, uh, a 6 by 8, which is what we're going to be using in a little while. So as long as you have even numbered increments on both sides of the paper, you're going to be fine. All right, so you can see that I've pushed my paper all the way to line up with that silver line on the base. We're going to go ahead and punch. We've got this funny looking tab here. Don't worry about that right now. We're going to just continue on exactly like we did with the border. So match the punched shape with the picture on the base. But we're not going to go right off the edge. We're going to punch until this edge matches up with this line. So I've got basically one more. And I can see that the edge of my paper is matched up with the silver line on the opposite side. So now I have those two funny little tabs. All right. Now those tabs help us place the paper correctly when we turn it and punch around the corner. So we're going to use the edge of the little tab this time, place it back in the punch, frame punch, base, frame base, Use the line on the base, silver line on the base, and now we just continue punching. So you can see when I move my hand here that now it's created a design that goes completely around the corner. So we'll just keep going here, and now with this last punch, I'm going to see that my edge is around that silver line. So I know that that's the last punch for this side. Okay. So I just keep turning and keep punching. Line up the edge with the one silver line on the opposite side. Keep on moving. I'm just going to keep going here and we're going to see the beautiful frame at the end. Now you don't have to go as fast as I am. Just take your time. We're at the end. We've got our funny little tabs. And this time when we come to the end, it's basically going to have completed our beautiful frame. So that's why these frame punches are so versatile because you can get both styles of punching. All right, let's get rid of all of those little debris. I will point out that the, um, the shapes that come out here, we've got a bunch of different little shapes. These ones remind me of like, I'm, I'm showing my age here, does anybody remember the Partridge family? <laughs> These ones look like the Partridge family. Um, 
on TV. So it's like Shirley Jones and all of her little partridges behind her. So these are the, the spots on the leaf there. So you can definitely use those in some other way in, in sometimes. Uh, you know, a couple of those would be actually make really pretty little leaves in an embellishment cluster. Okay, so that's how easy it is to punch your border and your frame. All right? Okay, so those are the basics. Let's get into how we're going to use both of these techniques for some layouts. So this is our first layout here. And if you look closely, you'll see that the brown paper looks like two different pieces, but all I've done is punch a complete frame from the brown paper, and then we've cut it in half. So let's go ahead and recreate this. I'm using the brown speckled paper. It has that beautiful birds on the back. And then I'm going to put it on the... Um, the green leaves that has a little bit of the brown in it. So using that brown side is going to coordinate really, really beautifully. So these are the only two pieces of paper I'm going to use. All right, <laughs> I'm seeing comments about the, pa the Partridge family. Yes, come on, get happy. Uh, I will just comment that, of course, these hero patterns are absolutely gorgeous, but when you punch with some of these intricate edges, you lose the design of the punch into the pattern of the paper. So when we punch, we're going to use the brown side, but I'm going to flip it over so that you see what I mean. So this is going to be our base page. This is going to be our punch page. So let's go ahead. It's going to take me just a minute or so here to punch my frame. I'm just going to go quick. And I just punched out of white cardstock. It's so much smoother and easier to punch from our designer paper. I have way less pressure that I have to do, have to give, and it just feels so smooth. So this again was starting with a full size 12 by 12 inch piece of paper. So just bear with me until I get this done and punched just rotating it at the side or at the end of the row and then using the little tab to uh, line up that next row. And you know that my motto is really that easy, fast and fun. We come here every week to do fast and fun projects. And, you know, I feel, because I'm filming this, I feel like it's taking me a long time. But really, this, all three of these layouts are really fast. Like I said, they only use two pieces of paper. And most of the work is done now that we've finished our punching. Now, we're going to take this. Oh, let me show you. Before we go on, let me just grab another piece of paper here. And even if I had a more of a solid piece underneath, you see how you can't really see the, you can see the outer edge, but you can't see the details. So just remember that with some of these more intricate punches, you want some contrast. So even that brown against the blue, I don't see it as much. So you definitely want some contrast, some light and some dark. And then you want a solid and then, you know, a bit of a tonal pattern or, or focus on those tonal sides. You can bring in the patterns elsewhere, but when you're using these intricate punches, they work really beautifully with tonal patterns or solid cardstock. Okay. All right. So all we're going to do is we're going to cut down through this frame. And if you'll notice, all I did was cut after the first set of leaves. So you could cut wherever you like. If you want to cut between, you know, the second and third, that's fine too. But I'm just going to cut between the first and second. And basically that's at about two and three quarters. But I'm just going to make sure that my, the little divot here between those two leaves is on my cutting line. Okay, so that's all I've done. That's the only extra cut that I did. 
So now I've got these two straight edges and when I place the straight edges against the outside edges of my paper, I've got that beautiful look that again looks much more difficult than it really is. So I would just measure up, I think it's about one inch to the edge and that gives me lots and lots of room for a couple of photos. And again, super versatile. So there's a six by four, a six by four. I could also put a couple of photos over here if I wanted, a little four by three or a three by four, or even a four by four. Let's get a four by four. That would look pretty too, because then you get an extra photo, but you still see that beautiful detail. Now, again, this is really versatile because I can turn it all four different ways. So I can have it like this, right? Just like I'm showing here. I can use it with the large space at the top. I can turn it this way. I could use it with the large space at the bottom, okay? And also, you can see how nicely this would be, with this would go if you decide that you wanted to do a two-page spread. So you've got one piece on this side, one piece on this side. This, of course, would use four pieces of paper, but you can see how you'd have some really, really beautiful um, frames and edges. So how nice does that look when you've got that beautiful big space in the center? Again, you can get a couple more photos, right? So you've got lots of options with something like this that you could create a two-page spread very easily or a single page spread, okay? So that is the first one, super easy. And I must say that these have always been my go-to frame punches. So you might remember before I ever worked with uh, CM's home office, I did some very similar layouts with the snowflake frame punch. So if you've got that snowflake frame punch, that looks absolutely beautiful with this style as well, because you get all of those details and there's enough of them that even if you, you know, kind of sh show um, or even if you kind of cover up some of the areas, enough of the, that beautiful edge detail will still show through. OK, so that's the first one. Punch a frame from one piece of paper and then cut it somewhere, wherever you think it would work best, uh, and then put the cut sides on the edges of your paper. Okay, so that's the first one. I told you, super fast, two pieces of paper. All right, let's look at the second one. Just grabbing it here. Okay, so now this one has a combination of borders and frames. So I'm gonna give you the dimensions for this. It is super easy. Again, I'm using two pieces of paper. So I'm gonna use this light blue to cut, and I'm gonna use this fun sort of water droplet pattern. And this kind of reminds me of some of those pen techniques that we did a couple of weeks ago. Um, just that kind of nice mottled or speckled sort of, um, sort of effect. So that's gonna be my base page. And what we need to do is we need to punch two borders and two smaller frames that we'll have our photos on. So this is what we're going to do. We're gonna punch one edge of this. Um, we're gonna cut it, and then we're actually gonna punch the other edge, and then we're gonna cut that apart. Let me show you what I mean. All right, before we do any cutting, let's just go ahead and punch our first border. Remember, border, front, O sound, border, front. I don't know, Did I, I didn't see if I had any other um, suggestions as how to remember that. Frame, base, border, front. That's how I remember it. I'd love to hear if anybody else has a good suggestion. Okay, so fast to do our border, okay? Again, save those little bits if you like. And then we're just going to um, cut this down at one and three quarter inches. 
So we're going to line up the edges, these punched edges, one and three quarters of an inch. Now, when I tell you the dimensions for the frame, you're going to say, well, why can't you just go ahead and cut them first? You can, but then you're going to have a small piece and it's going to be more difficult to put it into the frame punch. So basically we're using two inches of the paper for a border, another two inches for the second border. Then we're going to have eight inches left to make our frames from. But if I cut a two inch piece, well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and cut the two inch piece. And this is going to be what we're going to punch our second border from. So when you're punching borders, you need to have the paper sticking out the edge so that you can line it up. You can see now that this is a little bit too small. I can't see any paper sticking out the front edge of the punch. So if you end up with something like that, you want to make a border, but you don't have enough space or enough um, width on your paper to see it out the front, just give yourself a little handle. I'm just taking a sticky note and I'm just lining up the edge of the sticky note. And that's where I know that the edge of my paper is. So now I can see and line up the edge of my sticky note with that line on the front. We're going to get the exact same size because the amount of space that's taken, uh, that's punched off here is about a quarter of an inch. So again, I never thought I would need math after leaving high school as an art teacher, but it, uh, so I like to call it scrapbooker math. And really we're figuring out sizes of things based on our 12 by 12 inch papers. Okay, so whether you punch and cut to one and three quarters or you cut to two inches and then punch, you're going to get two borders exactly the same size. Now, we have this piece of paper. It's 12 inches by 8 inches. That's the leftover paper from our single piece that we're cutting. We're just going to go ahead and cut that into two 6 by 8 inch pieces. And that's the size that we need to start with in order to make these frames. And I'm going to use the alternate pattern on the back. And that's what I'm going to show as my frames. So again, these are six by eight, six inches wide, eight inches long. How do we start a frame? We start it on the base. So we go ahead, we just need to punch two times on the short edge and three times on the long edge. And remember what I said at the beginning, as long as you have even numbers, you'll be able to punch your frames. Okay, and this one is six inches by eight inches. Line up our tab. And these, again, they punch pretty darn quickly. Couple more and we're done this one. Okay, so there's one frame. Let's do the second one. Again, start with the line on the base. Turn and move, move your tab to that line on the base. I'd love to know which frame punches you think you might try this with. I believe that currently we have the geometric frame punch. I think we have the dollop arch frame punch, the spider webs frame punch, the, oh, and the damask flourish. So I think those are the frame, four frame punches that we have currently on the website but I'd love to know what tech, uh, which punch you might try this technique with. All right, so here we have our two frames. Here we have our two borders. So again, the long edge, the straight edge, it's going to go against the bottom. And you could, of course, do it this way, but I love the look of the straight edge 
along the top, and there you go. So now these frames will work. They'll work for a four by six. You can see that they take up a little bit more space. I cut these pieces of cardstock down to three and a half by five and a half. Okay, so you could even do a four by six mat. You know, maybe you're going to, um, maybe you're going to do it from a piece of colored cardstock or another, um, another pattern paper, and then you could put your three and a half by five and a half inch piece over top. All right, so that is, again, is a great and easy formula. One piece of paper, no waste except for your little, you know, your little debris from punching, and you've got a great layout. And just as versatile, again, you can put your, um, your borders at the side, you can put your frames in the middle and use them, you know, for horizontal photos. Uh, if you wanted to make this into a, a double page layout, but maybe you just want the single page, um, uh, you just want to cut one piece of paper. You could definitely use two base pages, maybe put the borders across the bottom, and then use one of the frames on each side. So again, just by punching that one piece of paper, you can actually have quite a lot of options and then you could get a couple more photos on there. Now I've layered it with some of our laser cut borders. So I've got that beautiful leaf laser cut border down at the side and then those sweet little butterflies up at the top. But you can also use the, um, the sticker borders, which is what I used on the first layout. So add those little embellishments, add those borders, and you've got a really fast and easy layout. And literally I have, I have four stickers here. I have the little leaf stickers that I've attached right at the bottom, right directly to the page. And then the little bird and the little title are just attached with some foam squares to pop them up. All right. Oh, and I did use foam squares to attach the laser cut borders as well. And most of them you can use with foam squares. Right, this beautiful tulip border. It's pretty solid, nice difference in colors and patterns there. So you can definitely pop that up with some foam squares, but there are a couple that would be more difficult. This one would be a little bit more difficult to add foam squares to, and so would this one. But look at how, what a pretty border that is. And that, of course, is the same shape as the fresh flower punch shape. So again, make sure you grab two packages of the borders so that you can really get your mileage out of them. But you've got a couple of different colorways and then that would be a gorgeous um, embellishment that you could create just by adding some punched fresh flowers. Let's, let's punch one really quick out of some, some paper. What have I got handy? Here's some of the orange. So you can see how beautiful that would be. And again, you can combine these and add, you know, your embellishments down at the bottom there, and that would be a great border. Okay, so really versatile and easy. That's our second layout, second sort of formula for using the spring leaves punch. So two borders, start with two inches or punch and cut it down to one and three quarter inch. And then each of the frames starts with a six inch by eight inch. So that's a good sort of um, reference. You know, if you're, if you're wanting to make a frame for a four by six, you would want to start with six by eight. Add two inches to the dimension. If you want to create a frame for a four by four, you would start with six by six. So add a couple of inches to the dimension of the photograph you're working with. So that is our second layout. Two pages, two papers, and basically some punching. That's it. All right. And the third layout formula I want to share with you is this one. And I, I have a soft spot in my heart for this one. I love it when we use the frames just on the corners. 
So again, this is just two pieces of paper. What I've done is I've used a base page, a piece of white cardstock, and then I gutted the frame to add on top. So let's make this one. We're just going to use these two pieces of paper, one double-sided pattern and some white or of course coordinating cardstock. Okay. So first of all, let's just put this one aside. We're going to cut we're going to gut that one in a minute and let's talk about how to make uh, just the corners. So this is pretty easy. We're going to rely on our punch, but then we're going to rely on our fantastic 12 inch trimmer. So let's start. We're going to create a frame, but just at the corners. So start with the lines on the base frame base. Okay. So we've got one. We're just going to turn it and we're going to punch at the little tab. Okay, so that's our corner. Now we're going to repeat that in the other three corners and then we'll take care of that spot in the middle. So frame and base. Just give it a turn. Two punches at your corners. This one's really quick. And again, versatile in that you can do whatever you want with your photo arrangements once you get the base done. Okay, so now we've got this kind of strange looking, <laughs> strange looking piece. We're going to need to cut off these little tabs. They're, they're big tabs really, but we know that our trimmer has the, the capability of doing that. So what I like to do here, I'm just going to be lining this edge up and what I want to do, maybe if I show you with the ruler, what I want to do is make sure I'm lining the two places where it joins. So this is the part that I want to cut off. So I'm going to look right at this little intersection here and that's what I that's where I want to put it right on my cutting line. So I'm going to use the tab on the opposite side to keep it nice and stable and then I know that it's going to be difficult for you to see but if I'm looking uh, at my number three cutting line right here and right here I am aligned with my cutting line. So now I'm going to rely on the white line on the side of my blade housing. And I'm going to look from the side here and when the white line lines up with the edge of my paper, that's when I'm going to depress the blade and engage it. And then I'm going to keep looking at the side here. I might have moved it a little bit as I moved my trimmer. But I'm going to let the blade, uh, release pressure on the blade when the white line gets to the edge of this paper. So let me just see if I can show you. So when I stopped, when the white line met the edge of that white paper, I hope you can see that. Okay. And that just takes that little strip away. And that's how we get that beautiful, just corner look. So let's just do that a couple more times without me moving my my trimmer all the way around. There we go. Let's again, use the tab opposite as much as possible to kind of assist in your placement or use the line here. Basically, it's the one inch line to, um, to get your paper in the right place. And again, this is something you don't want to rush through. If you're more comfortable, you know, kind of doing most of it and then just trimming off the little last edges with your um, scissors, by all means do that. Okay, just looking from the side here. All right, so there we go. That's how we get that beautiful look with just the corners punched. So you could go ahead and just place it right on your, your base page. Okay. And it looks fantastic that way, but I just wanted a little bit more. So I chose to cut out 
the center of the base page. Now let's just do a little bit more scrapbookers math here. So this is basically a 10 inch square now. So if I cut out an eight inch square from my base page, I am very confident that I have lots and lots of room. And if you've never gutted uh, you know, a square or cut a hollow frame from your base page, again, really easy. And it's the same principle focusing on where that little white line on the side of your blade housing is. So if I place the edge of my paper at two, if I start cutting at two, stop cutting at 10, and do that on all four sides, I'm gonna be able to cut out an eight inch square from the center. So I just typically look at where two is, press down, move my finger to the 10 inch mark, and stop there. And I know there's lots of other little hacks to do that, but for me, this works just fine and is super fast. So each time I'm turning it, placing my finger at two, stopping, cutting at 10. And because our blade is really a precision blade, you typically don't go over. And even if you do, it's such a clean cut that it's not a big deal. So now we've got our base. We've got our first beautiful layer. And then we take our piece that we cut from the center, flip it over, and then we've got a beautiful base page. Super, super fast. And you can see here, uh, you'd be able to get a couple of, you know, three by five, you know, with a nice title. Of course, you can use it sideways as well for vertical, or sorry, horizontal photos. Okay, or you can get four three and a half inch square photos there. Again, I cut one of the map cards into a three and a half inch square, so that's kind of using it my little title. Just a couple of those beautiful floral stickers and then a couple of sweet little butterflies, one in each corner. So anytime I'm doing a, a you know, a frame style layout like this, I typically just put my my uh, embellishments at opposite corners. Uh, again, what you want to do is move your eye around the page, but you don't always need the triangle. Okay, you can definitely have it on a diagonal. That's what creates the movement as well. All right, so those are our three pages. Let me get these all back here for you. I don't know if all three will fit in the camera shot, but a single frame cut in half and the uh, long edges put on the sides of the paper, two borders and two uh, four by six inch frames or frames for four by six inch photos. And then the one that we've done last with that beautiful corner. So these are really my three go-to layouts anytime I want to play around with the frame punch. Uh, I, haven't, I have yet to have this not work so give it a try. And again, if I, I haven't seen all of your responses, but I can't wait to see which maybe of our retired um, frame punches you try some of these layouts with. All right. So let me bring you back here and let's wrap this up. But again, older new frame punches will work with this and any collection. Two pieces of paper. That's all you need. And if you want to do a, a, a double page layout, two base pages, and you can spread the pieces across or punch an additional piece. So maybe four pieces if you want a double page uh, spread with lots of those beautiful punched shapes on it. But super fast, super easy. Of course, uh, we're at about 10 minutes to the hour. So, you know, it took me about half an hour, 40 minutes to demonstrate those three types of cuts to you but you can definitely create those layouts from start to finish in well under an hour. So keep those in your back pocket and try them with your frame punches. I can't wait to see what you create. 
Okay, what well, Suzanne saying one and three are her favorites. Yeah, so I like the ones with the frames for the photos, but I like it even better when I stretch that one into a two page layout. The one with our, um, the second one we did with the two photo frames, stretched out, it's a beautiful look. Okay, so let's wrap it up. And uh, next week, I'm actually going to take another one of your big, big questions. Probably the question I get asked the most, and I see it from other creators as well. How do you make good clusters of embellishments? That seems to be the thing that people struggle with the most, knowing where to put your clusters of embellishments and knowing how to place clusters together. So that's what we're going to focus on next week. Um, and I've got some fun ideas for you for that. But we've got a couple of things coming up still this week. We're not done yet this week. We've got our fantastic virtual crop happening this, this uh, coming weekend. Every month we have a virtual crop, second Friday of each month. And of course, you're going to get four brand new sketches. You might want to try, you know, these layouts that we, we, we did together today over the weekend, but you're going to get four new sketches, four layouts to inspire you. And hopefully you'll scrapbook all weekend long. So those will be released on Friday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Now, I know that there's been a lot of questions, a lot of new people in the group, and they say, how do I join the virtual crop? You just show up here at 5 p.m. Uh, Central Time on Friday, and you'll see a post where you can download all four of the sketches and then you can crop on your own time and share all weekend long. And don't forget to check back into the Facebook group because everybody's sharing all weekend long. So you're going to see hundreds, maybe even thousands. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but you're going to see hundreds of sample layouts that people from all over the world are creating using these sketches. So it's a great way to get inspired. And again, a lot of our ladies, you know, print them out, put them in their virtual crop binder, use a little tracker to keep track of them, and they make sure that they create all of the layouts. So that's something to definitely have fun with. And there's prizes. Did I mention there's prizes? There's prizes. So you definitely want to tune in. Our friends on YouTube, sorry, we don't do the virtual crop on YouTube. So you're going to have to come and join us in the Facebook group. And I know that not everybody loves Facebook, but I encourage you, even if it's just to have a, uh, a profile that you only use for the CM Virtual Crop Facebook group, it's worth it. I promise. It's so, so good. And you know what's going to make it even better? March is actually National Reading Month. Did you know that? I didn't know that. But when we found that out, we thought that what fun it would be to create something truly special, something we've never done before. And that is CM reading glasses. Oh my gosh, I have to put a pair of these on. I'm not going to be able to see you because I am nearsighted. But aren't they so cute with the tortoise shell and then the CM coloring? So they actually come in two different strengths. We've got Look at me. I'm like, what? What strengths are they? They come in plus two and I'm going to have to look and see what the other strength is. But there's two strengths to choose from and they come in this great little case. So they are so fun. If you wear reading glasses, you want to definitely grab these. Look at the fun little CM shutter on the side. So those will be for sale tomorrow at noon and they will continue to be on sale. They, they, they don't have an end date. But even more fun than that, we've got a special set of stickers and we're calling them Scrapbook Club. And it is a little sticker pack full of icons. Let me see if I, I can switch you back over here really quickly so you can see this a little better. Full of icons and um, different things that you can use for reading and for your scrapbooks. Look at this shelf of books here. Those could be scrapbooks or all your novels. Great colors. And do you notice that these colors work perfectly with not only birds and blossoms, but NSD. So these are a great little extra set of stickers. Look at the sweet little owls. You got your cup of tea, your reading glasses. You've got some scrapbook albums to, you know, 
so much fun. So much fun. If you are a reader or, of course, we're all scrapbookers, this is a great set of stickers. So these and the two different strengths of reading glasses. And I think I happen to have two of the same here because they both say plus two. So you're going to want to check uh, all of the information that will be posted. If you're an advisor, the you will have received an email showing you exactly and giving you all of the details about the reading glasses and the scrapbook club stickers. So those go on sale tomorrow at noon central time. Don't forget that the um, buy it all bundle, the birds and blossoms buy it all bundle is on until Friday at noon along with free shipping. So tomorrow, wait till noon, get your reading glasses, get your scrapbook club stickers, get your buy it all bundle, anything else you need for your virtual crop and get free shipping on everything. So, so much fun and so much goodness for this, uh, for the rest of this week. And then I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing all of your pages that you create all throughout the weekend with virtual crop. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through, I, uh, oh, okay, so Terry is helping me out. She's saying the other strength of the uh, reading glasses, she must have been looking at her advisor email, is 1.5, 1.50. So that's good to know. Thanks so much, Terry, for helping me out with that. So again, check your email if you're an advisor for all of the details, the prices in your market, etc. And if you are a CM fan and customer, uh, either check with your advisor or watch tomorrow at noon on the website for your market so that you can get all of the details there. Okay. How late is free shipping tomorrow? Free shipping goes until Friday, March 8th at noon CT. Same date, uh, same date and time that the Buy It All Bundle for Birds and Blossoms is finished as well. So make sure that you're getting those, uh, your orders in by Friday, March 8th at noon to take advantage of those two promos, free shipping and, and the 10% discount on the Birds and Blossoms Buy It All Bundle. And of course, then you'll want to order your glasses in the appropriate strength and your Scrapbook Cups Club stickers. All right. And we might, I think we're going to have actually a couple of examples or at least one example of the scrapbook club stickers in the virtual crop on the weekend. So again, it's always a great idea to check out the sample layout and you get even more ideas from, uh, with the sketches and such. So it's going to be a good weekend. It's going to be a good weekend. Uh, somebody's saying, yeah, clustering with sticker embellishments. That's what we're going to talk about next week. So make sure you join me next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Central Time. I'll look forward to seeing you again then. And we'll talk all about stickers and embellishment clusters. Okay? So have a great time at the virtual crop. Have a great week. And I will see you again next Wednesday. All right?